This video is brought to you by CatBeast.com. Design your own custom snapbacks and hats. Guys, we're going to be talking about something a little bit different today. Over the past few years, there has been a massive shift in the popularity of certain sneakers and the decline in popularity of sneakers and just the shifting of what is a cool sneaker in today's sneaker culture. It has been ridiculous. Over the past two to three years, it has shifted 180 degrees and I wanted to talk about the five reasons, in my opinion, that running sneakers are now much, much, much more popular than Jordans and basketball sneakers in general. Keep in mind these are just my opinions and I myself do still like basketball sneakers and Jordans. I also like running sneakers. I think it's great to have a lot of variety in your collection. So this is not me saying the basketball shoes or Jordans suck. This is me saying why they have declined in popularity and runners have grown in popularity. If you guys enjoy this style of video, check out my vlog channel in the top right hand corner of the screen. But without further ado, Let's talk about this. So the first thing that obviously comes to mind is the price point of basketball sneakers. These right here retail for $190, just a basic pair of Jordan Retros. These, a pair of KD7 Elites, retail for $200. Just a standard pair of foam posits, retails for $230, and there are colorways that retail for $250. And this LeBron 11 Elite Championship pack right here, retailed for a ridiculous, jaw-dropping, $295. Those are some ridiculous price points to be paying for a pair of sneakers. $295. Keep in mind, not all of them are that expensive, except you have to be paying around $170 to $200 average for a pair of basketball sneakers. You take a look at running sneakers, these right here. Nike Free 3.0s retail $100. I got them for $70. You take a look, this is a very popular Adidas sneaker, Adidas NMDs, $130. And you can get them sitting on a Foot Locker shelf. And then the top tier Adidas running sneaker right now, the Adidas Ultra Boost, is still cheaper than the cheapest basketball shoe that I showed you. These retail for $180 and Jordan Retros are $190. I think the constant price increases of basketball sneakers over the years just finally made sneakerheads and the public in general just get sick of these ridiculous prices and jump over to a much cheaper footwear market. Another big difference has been the extreme change in the way that running sneakers are designed and the way that running sneakers look. Five years ago, basically, you were confined to something like this. Now this this is not a five-year-old silhouette. This is I can't I think it came out 2012, 2013, but something like this, just a very running looking sneaker. This has little to no casual appeal. Or you could get a retro New Balance, a retro pair of ASICs, or a retro pair of Air Max. Besides that, there was no contemporary running sneakers that looked fashionable. You fast forward now to these two sneakers once again. Keep in mind these are this is an actual running shoe. This is a running inspired shoe right here. So these are both in the running sneaker realm of things. They're two very new silhouettes. They're two very stylish silhouettes if you guys ask me. And you did not see this from running sneakers a few years ago. Now there's a lot more than the Adidas Ultra Boost and the Adidas NMD that are stylish running silhouettes. Of course, there's the Nike Flyknit Racer. There's some other great Adidas silhouettes out there that people have been getting really excited over, whether it be an actual running sneaker like the Adidas Ultra Boost or the Adidas Alpha Bounce or some of the lifestyle inspired running type sneakers like the tubular line that Adidas has been pumping out. There's a whole bunch of great running style sneakers that are out there that simply did not exist on the market a few years ago. Number three on the list, I think we all knew this one was coming, Kanye West. Now basically everything Kanye West has ever worn has become wildly popular after he wore it, and lately he has been wearing a lot of running sneakers. Now this is just not with Adidas, this is when he was with Nike too. Remember when he wore the Oreo Flyknit Racers and people went nuts over them and they go for way over retail on eBay? Remember when he wore the Independence Day Air Max 90s and they were sitting on shelves until Kanye wore them, and now they go for hundreds and hundreds of dollars? Remember when the Adidas Ultra Boost was primarily just a running sneaker until Kanye wore the all white pair with those black bottoms, and then they became a lifestyle sensation? And of course you guys all remember Kanye West's signature shoe, the Adidas Yeezy 350, which is completely 100% a running inspired sneaker.
Number four is probably the most important reason in my opinion besides the price point. Price point is paramount, but this is number two on the list and it has to be comfort. You look at a pair of these, Jordan 12s, one of the most comfortable Jordan retros out there. And as I said, they retail for $190. They pale in comparison to these guys right here, the Adidas Ultra Boost. These things are great. The most comfortable sneaker I own in my collection and I would wear them every single day if I had like a dozen colorways, this would be pretty much all I wear. I love them, they're stylish and more importantly, they're comfortable. These are some of the most comfortable Jordans you can get. They're nowhere compared to these, at least in terms of comfort. I think these look a little bit better to be completely honest, but for comfort, these win every single day. And these are $10 cheaper. And to be completely honest, comfort isn't the biggest factor for me because I have almost 200 pairs of shoes sitting in my house. But for the average consumer that's buying a pair of shoes to wear for six months, eight months, maybe even a year, or even if you do have a small rotation of like 10, 15 pairs of shoes, you're looking for something that you can wear a lot. Final reason, at least in my opinion, is there are a lot more collabs. There is a lot more exclusive products. Product. There is a lot of choice to get something that not everyone else has. Increased exclusivity, as big of an oxymoron as that is, is a huge driving factor in almost any market. You look at the special edition Xboxes, the special edition PlayStation 4s, it's going to do the exact same thing for you, except it's exclusive and not everyone's going to have it. There are barely any exclusive Nikes and exclusive Jordans anymore. You're lucky if you get one every two months, like a truly exclusive Drake times Jordan or just Dawn times Jordan or something of that sort. There is a new runner collab dropping from a different boutique every single weekend and having that knowledge that you are one of only 500 people or 1,000 people or 1,276 people, whatever the case may be, that has that pair of sneakers has a lot of weight, especially in the sneaker community. And the amount of collabs that brands have been pushing is a huge factor in terms of increasing popularity. But that's just my opinion, guys. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Have running sneakers surpassed basketball sneakers? and Jordans. They're at least at an equal level of popularity. I don't think anyone can argue that, but have they surpassed them? I think they definitely have, and the five reasons that I just cited are the main reasons, at least in my opinion. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below, and keep in mind, I still love basketball sneakers, and I love Jordan retros. This video is in no way to take away from those shoes. I think they are great, and I wear them on a weekly basis. But anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Hit that like button if you haven't already. I'll see you guys tomorrow with a brand new video, so until then, peace.